Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tentacom video, we're going to be talking about mobile devices, specifically from NVIDIA. NVIDIA have been extremely brazen and bullish when they have said that they have a prototype right now in the works. It's getting ready for release. That is actually more powerful than the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and even its own 8800 GTX core. And that's very very impressive to say the least and this is on a mobile platform now this in case you're wondering is from a project known as project logan and project logan is actually a single smx processor now to put that into perspective that houses 192 cuda claws cuda cores i'm sorry that's c u d a as well as 16 texture mapping units now it's worth noting that there are still some questions, some variables unknown. The first is what clock speed you'll actually be having this SMX processor actually running at. Second is what type of available memory bandwidth will you actually have along with the processor as well as the type of memory could you even have with the sucker. Remember it's one thing to say that a processor is ridiculously fast. But if the actual memory bandwidth is simply not there to feed it, it's a simple case of it cannot process the data fast enough and therefore it is, well, hampered. If you guys want a really quick study on this, if you're not familiar with the graphics cards too much, I'll give you a really classic case study. The original GeForce SDR, which was released way back when. Um, the original SDR wasn't actually that much faster than the TNT2, which had actually just been released uh, about a year or so prior. However, the GeForce architecture was significantly better but the SDR memory, simply put, was not capable of feeding the GPU enough data to really make it where that you could be like, okay, this is leaps and bounds better than the previous generation. Indeed, the reason behind this was the, the DDR memory at the time, SDR, which was single data. We're not even talking DDR2 or DDR3 here. We are talking SDR, so they're significantly slower than even a DDR1. But... Basically, DDR1 at the time was not prevalent, and that's putting it mildly. And so, it took a number of months that DDR started to really seep into the GPU marketplace. And indeed, the GeForce was actually the real first GPU. Beforehand, it was only really known as a graphics card. The GPUs were then, of course, um, or graphics cards back then, the earlier ones weren't really able to hang handle, I'm sorry, triangle lighting on the card. Now, of course, that's part and parcel of what makes a graphics card a graphics card, it, its ability to process all of this data. Now, with the advent of DDR just a couple of months later, not the advent, but at least the inclusion of it onto this uh, graphics card, the GeForce actually became significantly faster. I don't remember the percentage of percentages, I'm sorry, but it was around 20 to 25 percent or so. It was significant. And indeed, this extended even further when you look at the GeForce 2 MX. Indeed, you've got significant improvements in speed if you actually overclocked the memory and left the core alone simply because the memory was not fast enough to feed the GPU, despite the fact that NVIDIA had made some significant differences actually in the architecture to make the memory uh, much more efficient. Even so, it just didn't matter. The point being, it was still, well, strangled for data. Let's just put it simply. Now, it's already faster than the iPad 5 and other uh, hardware as well. So what does this actually mean for games? Well, one of the really major, major benefits of this is the actual graphics API or application programming interface that Project Logan supports is actually based upon OpenGL 4.4 as well as a DX11. This is significantly different because most mobile graphics systems actually only use OpenGL ES 3.0. So what does that mean? Well, that means for games, really good things. 
That means for games that small indie games will be much easier to port over. It means support for, for example, Windows RT and Android devices pretty much off the bat. It will be ridiculously easy to do. And on top of all of this, may I add, you've also got NVIDIA's own CUDA programming language. Now, for games, it's probably not going to be that relevant, at least at the start, because, as it turns out, CUDA and derivatives thereof are actually really good for stuff like physics. And we're not talking physics as in, you know, ICS, we're talking with an X. And that's actually NVIDIA's proprietary technology. They bought this out from a company known as Aegis, I believe it is. That's A-E-G-I-S, I think it is. Uh, it's been a long time since I researched the company, but basically, they used to provide um, add-on cards. So basically, you would put those into your into your system, very separate from the graphics card, and they would actually provide physics um, as a separate add-on card. But then the video bought them out, and basically, they included some of that to some of that technology onto their GPU. And so that's one of the reasons, of course, that NVIDIA's cards can do this. However, that technology, that very same technology, my ad, can also be used for very, uh, very, very different things. For example, it can be used for hardware acceleration or video decoding, or, for example, programming, or other things such as video encoding, um, and a lot more besides. So the good news is that. For next generation games, indie developers, and we're talking about on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and PC. This is really good news for indie developers because it means that they will be able to hit the ground running. However, there's always a problem. The issue here, of course, is either heat and power. This is one of the exact same things that I mentioned actually way back in a PS4 video. And one of the reasons that Sony went with the AMD Jaguar as opposed to say a really high-end CPU and GPU combination. Power is everything and in a mobile device on a smartphone for example it is not feasible for you to be oh okay well you know what I want to make a phone call so I guess I'm gonna have to you know have a mains you know extension cord with me now it just doesn't work therefore there has to be a decrease in power requirements as just a given. Now, if you were to take a mobile-based GPU, for example, the GT640, that actually has two SMX cores. However, they draw about 32 watts, and that's, well, far too much. Even if you reduce that by half, it's 16 watts. That's still a massive it's far more than what a mobile phone battery can really sustain over any period of time or whatsoever that's considerably decent. Now, NVIDIA have actually said that their GPU, from the demos that they're putting out right now, are capable of doing this from about 2 to 3 watts of power, which is... Well, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. That's very impressive. However... All is not rosy and perfect in the land of mobile gaming. Despite what many people are assuming to be much better technology, and indeed it will be in many ways, there are still a number of issues. The Android operating system as well as, well, the Windows operating systems, the smartphones as a whole, aren't really geared or created for gaming. The video also have significant competition. Those powering, say, the iPad, Power VR, all of these various hardware manufacturers are going to want a piece of this pie. They're not just going to say, well, gee whiz, you're doing pretty well. I guess we're just going to have to take second or third or fifth place. No, that's not how the industry works. NVIDIA have only recently released their Tegra 4 device. And there is no doubt about it that if NVIDIA do manage to push the mobile Kepler, which is basically what this is, to the 
limits of their claims, then we're going to be seeing significant improvements in mobile gaming. But once again, there are multiple issues with this, including CPU power, um, power as a whole, memory, um, and a lot more besides. It's not just a simple case of, well, the GPU is faster than Xbox 360, so all's hunky-dory and that's, th that's it. No, it doesn't work like that. And there are going to have to be significant changes towards operating systems as well. Currently, they simply don't really offer a graphical library and so on that NVIDIA really need, or should I say the games will really need, to take advantage of this. And therefore, there's going to have to be a significant, well, change in how they do this, as well as the actual games developers themselves are going to need their hardware. And even if they were to have all of this stuff, and this is the really important part, even if you were to have a smartphone or a tablet or whatever device, games are going to take a long time before developers are confident to release games that are, well, compatible with this. For example, if you look at a lot of the games on either the Android Marketplace, I, you know what, I'm just going to say Android Marketplace because I have a lot more familiarity with that than what I do, say, an iPhone device. If you actually take a look at the games on that, you'll notice that a lot of the graphics are fairly simplistic. There's a reason behind that. Even if you have a pretty powerful device and you can run all the games at max without any real slowdown, and that is the developers have to make sure that the games run on a wide variety of devices. And if they have a device that it's very powerful, but only a small fraction of people own it because it's only just came out. After all, most people have contracts with their phone, and some people are happy to break their contracts, other people can't, other people don't want to sell their phone, whatever, whatever, whatever. Therefore, it becomes a whole mess, and it takes a long time for majority of people, the majority of the market, to catch up to a position where enough people own that device significantly enough to be able to support enough games to be released on that device to take advantage of what that device can really do. So, we'll have to see. Um, I think it's going to be a very cool future, however. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.